Hello everyone, we are here in Austin, Texas at South by Southwest. We've seen some incredible movie premieres so far and I got to actually experience Arcadian for the first time ever with the audience. I mean, there was just so many great reactions. I definitely need to introduce one of the key components to the film. I'm with Christy. I'll give uh, you some time to actually introduce yourself a little bit, give your background, and then we'll jump into some questions about the film and your part in it. Great. Um, I'm Christy Schimmick, and I'm the editor of Arcadian. So yeah, I was a huge part of the post process and was with the movie for about a year. About a year. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy to think the timing of how long it takes to put these films yeah. together. Yeah. I feel like sometimes people assume it's just done overnight <laughs> and yeah. you know, you come up with an idea and a concept and you just roll it out to the theaters. But fortunately, there's a lot of key components. And as an editor, of course, you are very, very important. Can you tell our audience just about your major role as an editor for this film? and maybe one of the most exciting things for you that happened on this specific project. Yeah, definitely. Um, it was such a wonderful experience, first of all. It was a very collaborative experience, so I worked with hand in hand with everyone on the team, especially, of course, director Ben Brewer, who's fabulous and loves to collaborate with people. He He's really one of the most artistic directors I've ever worked with. Wow. So he was wonderful. And so basically what I did is I would get footage every day. So they would shoot. I would get footage directly the next day. And then I'd start cutting scenes from scratch. So we I just went through the whole process for their whole shoot. Um, kind of at first you start by yourself in the room, kind of getting your own vibe of the movie what you think, what performances you like. And then, um, yeah, then I turned the cut over to Ben like right before Christmas. So over Christmas break, we watched it a few times and we kind of talked about it. And, and then uh, we got started on actually working together and refining and, but again, what I loved about my process with Ben was he's just so collaborative. So like he would just kind of give me an idea or a tone of something he was looking for. And then I could jump in there and give it my own feel and spin and how I was interpreting interpreting his notes. So it was just a really great process for me as an editor. Yeah, that's so nice because I, I didn't think about that in respect to how much leeway you as an editor mm -hmm. have and kind of giving your opinions because I'm sure there's some projects that you work on where you really just have no say <laughs> yeah. and it's kind of more of, I guess, a singular type of position right. versus more of a teamwork type mm -hmm. of aesthetic. So it seems like everyone, including just everyone on the cast, it was more like a family yes. kind of feeling that they all had with one another in creating this project. And I feel like you could really feel that in the film. Do you think that that changes how you edit films sometimes as well, the dynamic that you have with those that you're working with? Yes, absolutely. Um, you're totally right. I feel like the heart that they felt on set came through in the footage and came through in the post process. We definitely had that family feel like we're this tiny team and same with even once visual effects came in and music and sound came in. We were all kind of this tiny little family working toward this amazing goal and we all fell in love with this project in our own ways and also just working together like the sound designer was fabulous. I mean, I'm sure you heard in the theater. Oh my I goodness, mean, <laughs> the <laughs> clicking sounds and things <laughs> yes. like that. I mean, I didn't even know what I could relate that to, which is why I admired the sound effects yeah. so much because it was so different and unique. Yeah. And I just like fully and all that, I'm always just amazed by yes. what people use to create certain sounds and things, but it really does change the dynamic of the film itself. Totally. And the designer was like telling us the other night that that was like his door knocker. Like, oh, really? <laughs> Oh my and gosh, so that was a door knocker. A door knocker that he recorded for like 10 minutes straight and his wow. neighbors were like, what are you doing? <laughs> um, also, like, is he traumatized from the door knocking sound you. anytime right? somebody goes to visit him? And that's right? just what he thinks of as like some crazy like alien-like creature. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, you know, like with that process, like I fell in love with that team. And again, Ben had such a unique vision and he totally knew what he wanted. So when we were all interacting, he was just so clear about like, this is the tone, this is the feel, this is what I want out of it. How do we achieve it? Wow. 
I mean, that's kind of the best that you can ask for, I yeah. guess, from somebody that's working alongside of you to create such a special project. And I know that editors sometimes, you know, you're kind of in your back cave. Yes, you know, totally. you're, you're in the room that's kind of like hidden behind the scenes. Did you actually get to hang out with Nicolas Cage and the rest of the cast a little bit as well? Um, a little bit in ADR. So I okay. don't usually get to see them very much, but when they all came in for their ADR, I did get to meet them in person. And Nick was online, but I got to see him for a few minutes. And um, same with Matt. I was in the room when he was doing his ADR, so that's always a fun part when it's like, I've been staring at you for a year. Right? It's <laughs> but uh, now I get to meet you. <laughs> it's like you're spending so many hours on the screen just staring at them individually, yeah. but then it's like, I feel like I know you, but we really haven't had that yeah. interaction quite yet. And as far as just the setting, I they said it, it took place at... Yeah, in Ireland. Yeah. Um, it's crazy because that just specific location is so beautiful. Yes. I mean, how was it just getting to edit these incredible locations? I know sometimes you probably have to edit locations where it's kind of just like, oh, okay, this is great. You yeah. know, it's more of a studio feel versus, well, yeah. this is like incredible landscaping. Yeah. I think that the landscape added to that real rawness feel to it, which is what we wanted. And it also kind of, you know, a lot of like dystopian future movies have that kind of desert feel. Like they're mm -hmm. very dry. They're very, we would like, you know, Ben wanted the opposite. He wanted this lush green landscape and it's like nature has taken back what it originally had. And so we really, they were really specific about that feel. Like nature's come back, nature has overgrown you know, what we had once damaged as humans. Yeah. So it was such an integral part of the movie. And so, yeah, so cutting it was a delight because like you said, every piece of footage I was getting and I'm like, this is gorgeous. It's very green, but yeah. also kind of destructive in the same way. Yes, yeah, it's like overgrown buildings yeah. and like, you know, this, all of these lush, yeah, grasses and trees and it's just, and it also added that like, everything's pretty muted color wise in the film, except for this green, right? Like mm -hmm. this nature that's like coming back is very lush. And so I think it just gave a great contrast visually to the film. Yeah, I mean, and it was also, the lighting was pretty mm -hmm. crazy as well and spectacular because there are, I feel like lighting was so important in yes. the edits to really just depict what was going on because clearly once the sun is down, mm -hmm. you know, that's not to, you know, say anything, to give anything <laughs> away, but, you know, light is so important and yeah. you having to edit and making sure, you know, that everything fits a specific tone. Was that kind of a critical and harder, I guess, job for you? when going through that process. We actually did a full temp pass of color for it to like help push us in that direction um, and to ensure like when we were watching back with you know groups and with to see if that translated because it is mm -hmm. such an important part of the movie so we definitely like did a full visual pass just to make sure that was translating and we were very aware of it we actually like removed little portions of the movie when we were like this wow. isn't translating or this is translating as an extra day wow. or something like that so so we were actually really careful about that like you said it's such an integral part of the film mm -hmm. and the story and so we yeah that was definitely on over our here like nicholas cage is telling you to get home you better get home because <laughs> yeah. if you don't get home dad's gonna be upset with you you need time out yeah. so no one worry. wants to make him mad <laughs> i know none of us want to make him mad and as far as i guess the most complicated part of being on this project. What was that for you? Um, I'd say technically complicated was that we actually, I worked very heavily with the visual effects team, which is kind of unusual for the editor. Usually um, we hand it over to a lab and they yeah, finish like, up the later. movie. Yeah, it's like, oh. And then, you know, we come in to see the final processes. Yeah. You know, we come in for that. But I actually, um, would get shots back from visual effects and do the opticals, which is like punch-ins um, oh. and, and pushes. And so I was actually handling all of the camera moves and things like that that we mm -hmm. wanted to modify in mm -hmm. post. So that's pretty unusual. Usually the lab is doing that, but it actually made so that everything was exactly how Ben wanted and mm -hmm. how we wanted. And it was also um, a really fun process for me. Like I said, yeah. I don't usually, I'm not usually that hands-on once we get to that process. Uh -huh. And so it just ensured that everything Thing was exactly how we wanted and it ah. just you know made the movie um, exactly what we wanted it to be. I always wonder that when you have so many pieces of individuals working on a project sometimes it's great I guess because it's less work but at the same time I feel like it kind of causes confusion and yeah. things aren't as clear in the outcome of you know what the overall film is supposed to look like so that's really interesting I've never really yeah 
thought about like how different things are split up and divvied out. Yeah. But it also, I guess, gives you a little bit extra additional things to add on your resume now, yeah, right? True, like, true. actually, I can do this as well. As far as horror and sci-fi though, is this kind of your first project you've added in this genre? Or have, you, have you done this before? I actually have done um, quite a few horror films and quite a few thrillers. I was uh-huh. in thrillers for a long time. As I say, recently I've done comedies, but I before did that- I did the Lindsay Lohan. Yes. Uh, you were on that project yes. for the Christmas film. Yes, for Christmas. Falling for Christmas. Mm -hmm. Me and all my girlfriends have seen that. It was a good one. (laughs) It was fun. It was definitely fun. And yeah, so, but before I got into comedies, I was doing thrillers and horror for almost exclusively. So it was fun to come back to this. I actually love thrillers and I love horror. So this for me was really fun. It was one of the things that drew me to the project for sure. That's what I was going to ask because I know that like it must be so different editing a comedy or love story versus sci-fi horror. Which is more complicated, would you say? Um, I'd actually say they're pretty different. It's there's there's just different pacing techniques and different elements and even different ways you handle the performances. With comedy, you get a lot of improv and a lot of, you know, stuff that is unexpected because you know you're trying to get a laugh. And then you know, with thrillers, it's all about Intensity, withholding right? information. Yeah, exactly. It's like the opposite. It's like I want to withhold everything so that there's tension. Uh-huh. And so you kind of have it's like two ends of a spectrum, but they're both really fun. I love them both. And uh, <laughs> but yeah, it was fun to get back into it. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's crazy to think about like this specific film because everybody kind of goes into it and I love this unexpected. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know when something's going to pop out. Like you, you probably were excited watching the audience to see if we were (laughs) jumping right because I'm pretty sure I jumped a thousand times in that film because I'm like a jittery (laughs) spectator. Unfortunately, I'm that girl you don't want to be sitting next to because I'll probably (laughs) jump into your lap and you don't know me. Uh, (laughs) Truly, when everyone like screamed and gasped, yeah. It brought a tear to my eye. Oh, really? <laughs> I was like, we did it. We did it. <laughs> it was so great. It was so fun to watch with an audience that was so excited to see it. And what are some of your favorite tools that you work with in the editing process? Yeah, um, I work with, on this movie, It was we used Adobe Premiere, which was okay. great. And it's actually a really um, flexible package. And the VFX team was using a lot of After Effects. So it was cool because we could like round trip. We could, it was again, that talking back and forth that was so essential for this project. And so yeah, the um, Adobe Suite made this really possible in this case because we needed that flexibility mm-hmm. and- After Effects is, is very you know good I guess when you're using Adobe Premiere yeah. and just kind of implementing the two together yeah. I know for those of you I guess maybe you can explain yeah. I guess using other programs and how it's a little bit different from you know these programs yeah totally um, yeah I would say that the Premiere suite well the Adobe suite is so great about again that flexibility we actually used um full format on this so we were using the full frame footage which is again unusual so that we could do those punch-ins mm-hmm. and do those special techniques that we were hoping to do and so and some programs can't even handle that size of footage or yeah. that type of footage and also again you can like kind of bring in anything into adobe premiere and you can use it you know, like raw, basically, yeah. which is really unusual. So you can, you know, bring in vi- visual effects. You can do temporary vi- visual effects in Premiere, which is essential for me because that's kind of a new common thing with editors now is that we're the ones doing the temp visual effects. Wow. And so we were doing some of that in Premiere. And so it just made it, again, that flexibility. It was just so important for our team on this movie specifically. I mean, everything just looked incredible. You could feel kind of, I guess, the cohesion between you and just like After Effects for me is just so complicated. I I look at After Effects sometimes and I'm just like, this is a math equation that I cannot solve. But I feel like the two meshings between Mm -hmm. what you've done on Premiere and what you've done with the VFX team, I mean, it just was like the perfect combination. And honestly, like I feel like sci-fi and horror too, there's Mm -hmm. pretty critical, I think, audiences. I would say some of the most critical and so I would feel almost more afraid as if I were an editor in your position Mm -hmm. to take on jobs like that but um, I guess at the end of the day what do you hope audiences leave a film specifically like a a film like this with like is it the image of you know 
the aesthetic of the creatures or the, re the how realistic it looks mm -hmm. um, or just like the emotions of how they feel when they leave the film. I was gonna say, for me, it's always the emotion. Yeah. These characters, I love these characters. They have so much heart and I feel like you really feel that in this film. And I love that the setting has the creatures and that the creatures are involved in the story, but and that it um, you know, brings out that heart in these characters and these, this emotion. And so I just absolutely, yeah, I would love for audiences to walk away falling in love with these characters. Yeah, and I mean, they're, they're very intricate yeah. monsters, which sometimes yeah. I feel like, you know, in other movies or TV shows, you don't get very much about yeah. the creature. You know, it's mm -hmm. just kind of like, oh, they're they're unusual yeah <laughs> and that's about it but these are so dynamic and mm -hmm. there's like almost like a chemistry and anatomy behind learning and understanding and I feel yeah. like in the editing process you really just showcase that so so well Thank you. and it makes me almost want to go back and, and study something like that if it did exist but you know Definitely. who knows if they're real or not everyone <laughs> they could be exactly <laughs> and is this your first South by Southwest premiere yes it is oh, it is, it is. So how does it feel to be here? Wonderful. It's been an absolute blast. I've loved South By. Um, the community here is so great, so friendly and fun. And yeah, that audience was a blast. So we just had a great time. And yeah, this has been a great first experience for sure. We were definitely excited. I'm like thinking maybe we need like baby stuffed animals <laughs> of the little creatures. I would love that. I don't know if like it's the cutest, cuddliest one to have on you, but you know, I think that would be something. I think so you know, too. You we need to tell make the that team happen. <laughs> and just yeah. have a little merchandise of some kind for us yeah. to snuggle with the, the actually, you know, we'll add the knocking sound. Oh my you God. Press the button <laughs> you press it. And it actually does the sound. That would be great. Yeah. And as a female, I mean, it's really exciting to see more women in the editing space. I know that it can be kind of more male dominated yeah. and so how do you feel the industry is changing and really diversifying things yeah I do think we're getting there um, when I first started I was usually the only woman on the team wow. like <laughs> very frequently and just over the last few years I've started to see more women in post more women in the field in general and working with more keys and you know heads of the the teams as women and so that has been so exciting for me because again it was kind of lonely out there for a while yeah, just being the only one <laughs> it really is but, but now i'm starting to see more and more which is great well and you're obviously setting the tone for other women to see you on these major projects i mean it's definitely paving a, a great path for other women to look up to somebody like you thank you what are some other projects that we can potentially look forward to seeing and are you starting to work on anything right now or yeah. Anything in the future? I've got some potential TV stuff coming up. Okay. I can't talk about it too much, but nice. <laughs> it'll be fun. So, yeah. Well, we're so excited. You did such an incredible job. Is there anything else you want to tell our audience about what they can expect and be excited about before, you know, going to the theaters and yeah. strapping themselves in for this ride? <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, I hope you enjoy Arcadian. I hope you enjoy its unique creature, like we've been saying, and just its unique story and look and feel. And and yeah, I hope you love it. Well, thank you so much, Christy. Thank Be you. sure to go see Arcadian. You are definitely gonna watch it more than once because I'm definitely gonna have two as well. <laughs> <laughs>